Hello, welcome to the Freckled Cottage. If you're new here, welcome new friend. My name is Cherie and I'm the owner and creator here at the Freckled Cottage. I love to thrift, flip, and make discarded items wanted again. Sometimes I place them into my booth and sometimes I keep them for my own decor. In today's video, I'm finally tackling a fat handful of unfinished projects that have just been laying around in my workshop. I cannot wait to get them completed out of my workspace and into my booth. For project number one, I have this really cute little metal tray and it's got these cut out autumn leaves on it along all the sides. I had painted it with two or three coats of Dixie Bell's drop cloth, hit a mental roadblock and it's been sitting in my workshop collecting dust ever since. I decided to tackle this by pairing it with IOD's Holly Glen transfer set from the 2023 holiday release and IOD's Barnwood Plank stamp set. I picked four little woodland animals out of the transfer pack. On the top I have a bird and below that a squirrel. Beneath the squirrel is a couple of little tree mice and then at the bottom is an adorable little hedgehog. For the background I selected a plank from IOD's Barnwood Plank stamp set. Before I inked it up, I seasoned the stamp because this is my first time using it. I have a 220 grit sandpaper and I just roughed it up a little bit to make sure that I get a good first impression from the stamp. I used Ranger's Archival Ink in Black and I'm going to go ahead and ink that up and get that stamped on the piece. Oh, I think that looks so good. I then used a paper towel to cover up the first impression since it was short, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom half of the tray. I'm not 100% happy with the way that these two impressions came together due to the slight gap, but in the end, the transfers cover it up, so it turns out just fine in the end. Once I was confident that the ink was completely dry, I went ahead and got these transfers applied to the tray, one by one. I wanted to add a little woodland grunge to the piece and decided to use wax to do it. The first layer is just going to be DIY's wax and clear, so I'm going to put a nice even coat of the clear wax on the entire piece. Once the clear wax is applied, I went in with some Kills Dark Wax. I used my little detail dark wax brush and pressed that dark wax into all of the little crevices and details, and then used a paper towel to wipe back the excess. I really, really love how this has added some age, some grunge, and bringing out all those pretty cutout details.
For project number two, I have this really cute little gourd that I picked up recently at a thrift store along with a bunch of others much like it. The real reason I picked this up was that I had picked up a jar of DIY Pennies from Heaven liquid patina and I was really curious how it would look. So I just picked up this adorable little plastic gourd and I just started painting it. I put three coats of the Pennies from Heaven on the gourd and then I just set it aside. And so I decided that now was the time that I wanted to go ahead and finish it. We still have the Thanksgiving season that people may be buying for, so I wanted to get this little gourd into my booth ASAP. The first thing I did was give it a quick coat of DIY wax and clear. I'm going to come in after the clear wax with some dark wax and I just wanted to make sure that I'm able to wipe back the dark wax to my liking, as I'm not at all sure how the surface will absorb the wax. Basically, when you have a base layer of clear wax, it's ever so much easier to control what the dark or colored wax on top is doing. So here I'm putting on a good layer of the dark wax and then I'm just going to wipe it back with a paper towel. This dark wax over the pennies from heaven is a technique that I've seen done and highly recommended before so that's why I'm trying it with this little gourd. I used the paper towel to wipe back the excess and I'll tell you, they were right. This layered effect gave this a really pretty toned look. The pennies from heaven is pretty bright and metallic and the dark wax toned it down into this really really pretty rich copper color that would look amazing in any pretty fall vignette. For project number three, I have this really cute oval frame. I had previously put this project together for the purpose of being decor at a baby shower that I have hosted this past summer that was bee themed. It was coming really, really fast and I didn't have time to do this one up super fancy. I just needed some bee decor in the room. So I cut a piece of art paper into an oval shape, threw these transfers on top and threw it into a frame and called it a day. I thought it needed more, so I went ahead, took it apart, and got to work zhuzhing it up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a mask. So I just grabbed a scrap sheet of the backing of a transfer because I could see through it, and I'm just tracing out the shape of the bee and the flower, and then I cut it out with some scissors. Once I had that cut out, I grabbed those barnwood plank stamps again. I chose a different blank this time, so I lightly seasoned and sanded that one as well. I decided on the VersaFine Clear ink in the color Pinecone, so I went ahead and inked that up and made sure that the mask was in the exact proper place before I put the stamp down. I think that turned out really nice. I really like how this background is turning out. It just gave it so much more interest and dimension. And so for the frame, I decided to put some paint on it. The first layer I selected was going to be DIY's weathered wood. I used a stippling motion to put two coats of that on this plastic frame. One thing I did forget to film is me putting a layer of big top on top of the weathered wood. Because it's a base coat, uh, when I put the next layer on, I don't want to distress past the weathered wood to the plastic of the frame. So once the big top was dry, the next layer I decided on was going to be DIY's cake batter. 
I did go ahead and put two full stippled layers of the cake batter on that as well, although I only did film the first layer. And then I took my trusty wet wipes here and distressed that cake batter back to the textured weathered wood. Once it was distressed to my liking, I put a layer of DIY's clear wax on it to seal it all up. For project number four, I have these three candlesticks that have just been laying around. Though the two did not originate with the one, they were all originally yellow, and they all had really good texture and dimension on them. The first two chunkier Roman style ones came as a set, and again, they were both yellow when I got them. I had painted them black and then heavily dry brushed them with white. This was a long while back and I did not like the result and I didn't know what to do with them. So I just set them aside and they've been laying around for quite some time. And then the third candlestick was also yellow when I picked it up at a thrift store not too long ago. And it has some really nice texture on it. So one day I was painting another larger object with some milk paint and I had some extra that I needed to use up. So I just grabbed all three of these candlesticks and painted them with the excess milk paint mixture. And then again, I just set them aside and they laid around for a little while longer until today when I decided to finally finish them up. So I decided that all three of these candlesticks were gonna get a good finish with decorative waxes. You may have noticed while I was chattering that I put a layer of clear wax on them first. The first two chunkier ones would be with black wax and the third one would be with white. And then I just wiped it back with a dry paper towel and this worked really, really amazingly to bring out all the details and just the incredible, incredible texture that's on these candlesticks. And then for the third candlestick, I did apply the clear wax also. And then for this one, I decided to finish it with white wax. So I put a nice layer of the creamy DIY white wax on the candlestick. And again, just use the dry paper towel to wipe it back for a really, really pretty effect.
And for project number five, I have this old cupboard panel that my father-in-law gave me quite some time back. And I had been experimenting with using school glue as a crackle medium. So for this piece, I decided it was gonna be a coat hanger. I got out these three pretty little black hooks from Hobby Lobby and decided to get out the IOD brocant transfer for the chickens and the IOD floral anthology transfer for the florals. I cut out the pieces that I wanted and then I just got to work arranging them in a pleasing way and applying them to the board. A little backstory on the board and how it came to be an unfinished project. This was quite some time back, so my memory is a little fuzzy, but I think I had put a layer of really dark, almost black paint on the piece, then a thick but uneven layer of Elmer's school glue. Then before the glue dried, I quickly added a nice layer of white paint without too many brush strokes, careful not to overwork it into the glue. So really just going over the piece in one stroke lengths. And so the faster the paint dries, the more crackling and texture you get. So then I used a heat gun to dry that up really fast. And it did produce a lot of this really nice crackling and aging, and I really like how it turned out. I don't remember the grit, but then I sanded it to make sure that it was nice and smooth and that the edges had some nice distressing on it. And then I decided that I was gonna make it into a shelf, and then I never did. And I set it aside and it's been laying around for quite some time. So I did end up having a bit of a rough time with these hooks. This board is a hardwood, it's not just cheap pine, so I had a hard time with the screws. Though I didn't remember to film it, I got the first two outside hooks drilled and screwed in perfectly, though it was challenging. Perhaps my drill holes weren't big enough. The third one in the middle, I ended up breaking the second screw off inside the wood. This was a big problem because the middle one was centered and any adjustments to its location would make it off-centered. Not good. So I was going to need to find a different solution for the middle hook. I found this pretty little medallion in my stash and I thought it would go nicely. It was gold so I brought it outside and I spray painted it black. I decided to come in from the back of the board, so I drilled a hole all the way through and then found a screw that would go all the way through just enough to catch something on the top. I put the screw in all the way through and then took some tight bond quick and thick and applied that to the medallion so that it wouldn't shift. Also, the medallion has a center hole, so I continued hunting, looking for another solution. I found this cute little knob and it had the perfect pre-drilled hole in the center, so I also spray painted it black to match. The cute little knob that I also spray painted black, it had a little hole in the bottom, so I just applied some glue and screwed that right on. Now that that is also not going anywhere, and I think this is a really, really nice outcome for this hanger, and I'm really glad that the one that broke was in the middle, and so I think it came out really nice. I added it to my booth the next day, and it has already sold. Mm -hmm. 
And for project number six, I have this picture board that I thrifted and it had an outdated painted motif on it. I believe that I painted the center of the board in DIY crinoline and the frame of the board I painted with some milk paint left over from another previous project. So what I did back in the day was I was playing with the IOD's sunflower stamp. I created a scene with the large side face side facing sunflower, the big stem and three of the leaves. I then painted it using a variety of paints. Some of them were Waverly from Walmart and some of them were DIY paints. And then I just stopped. I set it aside and I didn't do anything with it for a long time. So this week I decided to add it to this unfinished project video. I thought it needed something more than just sunflowers, so I decided to get out IOD's Birds and Bees stamp. I added a couple of bees to the scene, one of them on the sunflower and two of them flying around the scene. I used VersaFine ink in the color black and once those stamps were dry I got out the brightest yellow paint that I have which is Waverly in the color maze and I got to work painting some of the detail of the bees. And then I didn't like how dull the center seed area of the sunflower was. It was a little light for my taste. So I got out DIY's layered chocolate and proceeded to add some deeper color and detail to the center of the sunflower. And then it was time for the restamp. So I got out the sunflower and birds and bees masks and restamped over the painted areas. Now I wasn't 100% happy with the large sunflower impression as it was a little off, but I didn't think it was quite bad enough to scratch the whole project. So when masking, what you're after is protecting the stamp impression of whatever is in front. So you stamp first, whatever is in front, then, after it is dried, place its matching mask on top of it and then stamp whatever is behind it.
Once all of the stamping was complete, I noticed that I painted this entire board upside down. So I was gonna need to move the hanging mechanism. I got out a hammer and screwdriver and proceeded to remove the nails from the hanger. I wanted to reuse the hanger, but I didn't wanna use the nails again. So I got out my little pack of hanger screws and used a measuring tape to make sure that it was all centered. Finally, I put a nice layer of DIY's clear wax on it and called this one done. And there you have it. Six unfinished projects completed. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. All of these items will be available for sale in my booth at the Rustic Depot Market in Princeton, Minnesota. If you're not local, feel free to email me or DM me on Instagram. I'll have the depot send you an invoice and set up shipping. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you have like-minded friends, be sure to share it out. Check out previous content and also subscribe and comment to support my new channel. So appreciated. Oh, and turn on notifications to ensure you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Find time to create and see you next time.